Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well. Now, why are snakeheads illegal? Now, this might be a strange question for some of you watching, because in many countries, it is legal to keep snakeheads. And if any of you have watched my channel before, you'll know that I keep three species. But if we head over to my YouTube analytics, it shows me that 31.5% of you who watch these videos are from the United States, followed by 8.9% of you who watch from India, 6.9% of you who watch from the United Kingdom, 6.8% of you who watch from the Philippines, and 5.6% of you who watch from Indonesia. Also, I'm very interested to know where you guys are from because I talk to a lot of you guys in the comments without actually knowing where you're from. So let me know down in the comments where you're watching from. But today I'll be focusing on that 31.5% of you who are watching from the United States and also from other countries where snakeheads are banned. Because when I do videos on my tanks, I constantly get comments saying that they have fish envy as snakeheads are illegal in the United States and some other countries. But why is this? Well, the simple answer is people being irresponsible with their pets. As the majority of fish keepers are responsible and when you can no longer look after a fish or the fish outgrows its tank most fish keepers will look to rehome this fish or try and give it to a local aquarium but there is a small percentage of fish keepers who choose to release their fish into the wild and this can have disastrous consequences but in the US you are allowed to keep many tropical fish that have the potential to be invasive so why is the snakehead any different from these species well the snakehead has many traits in its behavior that may make it more of a danger to an ecosystem than other tropical fish that you can keep in your aquarium but first just to see how bad an invasive species species can damage an ecosystem, we'll travel over to Australia, and we'll also travel back in time to the 1930s. Now Australia has one of the most unique ecosystems in the world, with many different species of reptiles, arachnids and mammals that can't be found anywhere else in the world, and Australia is one of the main strongholds for marsupial mammals. And as recent history has showed us, these animals can be very vulnerable, as the thylacine, also known as the Tasmanian tiger, has gone extinct in recent years. So recent in fact that there are stale pictures of the Tasmanian tiger that you can see today and the last Tasmanian tiger died on the 7th of September 1936 in an Australian zoo. Some of the reasons why this unique predator died out was through hunting by humans as they attacked livestock and also they were outcompeted by dingoes and although there are a few apparent sightings of the Tasmanian tiger today they are still thought to be extinct and the Tasmanian tiger goes down in history as a very unique Australian mammal which was wiped off the face of the earth by humans. Now a year before the Tasmanian tiger died out in 1935 local Australian farmers were having problems with cane beetles. These beetles were decimating the crops of the farmers and they looked abroad for a solution to improve their crop yields. The Australian government decided on introducing cane toads and it was thought that these cane toads would destroy the cane beetle population and thus meaning that the farmers could increase their crop yield. But this would prove to be one of the worst decisions for the unique Australian ecosystem. When the cane toads were first introduced they had a very little impact on the cane beetle population and there were only slight improvements on the crop yield. But other than a failed experiment. Initially this didn't look to be such a bad idea, but a short time after these cane toads were introduced there were less and less sightings of the native predators such as crocodiles, monster lizards and snakes and it didn't take long for people to point the finger at the cane toad. Now the cane toad has two toxic glands above its shoulder and when attacked these produce a very toxic substance and when the Australian predators were eating these cane toads they were also consuming this toxic substance and as a result thousands of crocodiles, monster lizards and reptiles were being wiped out by these cane toads. But by the time people had noticed this problem, it was too late. As the predators were being wiped out by the cane toads, it meant that there was less predators to eat them once they had died. And because of the abundant food of this ecosystem and the death of the predators, it meant that they could breed in massive numbers. And they started to spread throughout Australia. But why did the Australian government not look into the fact that the cane toads were toxic when they first introduced them? This is because in the native range of the cane toad in South America, the predators had either evolved to be immune to this toxin, or they had figured out a way to eat these cane toads without ingesting the toxic parts. But in an ecosystem with completely new predators, this toxin proved to be fatal and the predators had no time to adapt. To tackle this problem, the Australian government told people to kill them on site to help control their numbers. But this also proved dangerous as there is one story of a woman hitting a cane toad with a hammer and the toxic substance from its glands squirted into her eyes, making her blind. And this story is just one of the instances where an introduction of a new species has had very negative impacts on the ecosystem. But today it is looking a little better for the native Australian wildlife, as some Australian water rats have found ways of eating the cane toad without consuming the toxins. So hopefully the cane toad won't prove a problem for much longer. But back to the United States, and specifically Florida. Now Florida has probably one of the biggest problems with invasive fish species, and this is mainly due down to the climate, as in Florida it tends to be very hot and very humid, which tends to be very similar to the destinations where fish are harvested for the aquarium trade. And many species of popular aquarium 
fish are known to be invasive to Florida's waters, such as the Oscar, the Pleco, and the Clown Knifefish. And this doesn't just put pressure on the smaller native fish of Florida, but also the bigger predatory fish such as bass. Because if these invasive fish eat all of the bait fish in the ecosystem, it means that there are no food for the bass and other native predatory fish. And yet these tropical fish are still widely available in the aquarium trade, but the snakehead is not. One of the main reasons why the snakehead has the potential to be such a bad invasive fish is its parental care. This is because snakeheads make very, very good parents. And if you've been watching my recent videos, you'll know I recently got a Chana Stuarti and it's very small. And at this stage in the wild, it would still be looked after by its parents. And these adult snakeheads guard their young ferociously, often attacking other fish that get near to their fry. Another reason why they're a big threat to the ecosystem is their predator nature as they'll happily eat other fish, insects and crustaceans, meaning that they could totally obliterate all the prey for the other predatory fish. Another factor that gives them the potential to be such a bad invasive fish is their adaptability. As I'm sure many of you know, snakeheads can breathe atmospheric oxygen as well as breathe through their gills. This means that they can survive in low oxygen conditions and they can also adapt to various water conditions and some species have been known to survive out of water for days. This means that not only can they survive in most water conditions but they can also eat a lot of prey fish and also breed like crazy and guard their fry. So really all you need is a breeding pair of snakeheads and this can cause a real strain on the local ecosystem. Now the main species of snakehead that's proven to be very invasive in the US is the northern snakehead. Now this is actually one of the few species that I'm not allowed to keep here in the UK and it is completely illegal. And this is because of its adaptability and also its ability to survive in colder water. As here in the UK, it rarely gets over 30 degrees which is 86 degrees Fahrenheit in the summer. And this means that most snakehead species if they were introduced into the wild would die as soon as the summer is over. So that's the main reason why I can keep snakeheads in my aquarium today. But because the US is so big, some parts of the US will be hot enough for snakeheads to become invasive but other northern states have similar climates to the UK. So other than the northern snakehead, there may not be as much danger to the ecosystem as there is in the southern states. And this creates a very interesting discussion, because some dwarf species of snakehead may not cause as much of a danger to the ecosystem as the larger species, and a blanket ban on all of the snakehead species may not have to be the only solution, as some species are so specialised and also don't get very large that they could be controlled and kept safely by aquarists. But there are arguments both for and against this. If you're from the US or Canada, or anywhere else that has a snakehead ban, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. But although I'm very happy and lucky that I get to keep snakeheads here in the UK, there are some fish that I can't keep, but you can in the US. And these are your native species. There are so many beautiful species of Native American fish, and native fish are so easily taken for granted, as you either see them every day, or they're so common that you rarely notice them. Species such as sunfish and bass are totally illegal for me to keep here, but you can freely keep them in the US. And I am very jealous of this, just as many people are jealous of me being able to keep snakeheads. And it's rightly so that I can't keep these fish, as one of the invasive species that's propping up all around the UK is the pumpkin seed fish. And this just proves why these strict laws are in place, so that they can protect native species from around the world. But this isn't just a modern day problem, as one of the native species in the UK is the carp, and this never used to be the case as they were brought over many years ago from Asia and are now recognised as a native species. But this is such a controversial and very complicated topic and I've tried my best to piece together all the information that I could to explain why these snakeheads are illegal in the US and many other countries. But let me know your opinions about the matter in the comments down below and if you think I've missed anything out also let me know in the comments down below. But that's about all for this video, thank you for watching. If you liked it please leave a like and if you could subscribe it really helps the channel out but until next time. Goodbye.